Good morning, and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist at St. Ignatius of Loyola Catholic Church. We also extend a special greeting to all visitors here today. We ask that you put your cell phones on airplane mode so they will not interfere with the live streaming. We welcome families with young children and encourage parents to bring children of all ages to Mass. If the need arises, please feel free to take restless children to the narthex and then return to continue worshiping together. As always, the nursery is available next door in the Christus Center for children ages one to four years.
Welcome once again and happy Easter. Today on Divine Mercy Sunday, we celebrate God's unparalleled mercy. Out of mercy for all of us, Jesus died on the cross, atoning for our sins, past, present, and future. Out of mercy for those whose faith is weak or doubt is strong, Jesus comes to reassure us of his eternal presence. Out of mercy for those who cannot see him, Jesus blesses them in their faith. This Easter season, let us rejoice, for the risen Lord is in our midst forever, bestowing God's divine mercy upon us. Our presider this morning is Father Norbert Medusa, our pastor, who will also be our homilist. He will be assisted by Deacon Pete Olivier. Please stand and face the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Just a week ago, these waters were consecrated. They were consecrated both by prayer, the immersion of the Easter candle into the water, and 14 new Catholic Christians that were born from this water. This water, then, is that which gives life. And so today, on the octave of Easter, as we conclude this octave today with the celebration of divine mercy, we remember the time in which God offered us mercy for the first time through the waters of baptism. And so today, on this eighth day of Easter, it is with joy that we renew our baptismal covenant into the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. Let us first praise our God for the gift of consecrated waters. Blessed are you, God, the Almighty Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God, the only begotten Son, for you poured forth water from, with blood from your side so that from your death and resurrection the church might be born. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God, the Holy Spirit. You anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan River that we might all be baptized into you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. We pray, O oh Lord our God, by the mystery of this consecrated water, remind us of our new and spiritual birth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we receive these life giving waters, we rise once more with Christ in glory, singing together, Water of Life.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in this very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. For the children from four years old to fourth grade who would like to hear God's word, Please come forward with your gospel presenter. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. You know, all during Lent, we were introduced to different characters in the Bible, right? Remember, there was the woman at the well, the man born blind, there was Lazarus, there were all these different people. Today, there's a new person that's going to be introduced, or reintroduced, I should say, because he's been around for a long time, and his name is Didymus, Didymus. But he also had another name. Do you know what his other name is? Absolutely no, Absolutely no she says. <laughs> With hands like this. His name is Thomas. Do you, does that sound familiar? Thomas? Yes. 
He is one of the 12. That's right. He is one of the 12. And he's famous not just for being one of the 12, but he stands out because he says, I will not believe that Jesus rose from the dead until I can put my finger in his hands and my hand in his side. And today is that story about what happens. Do you ever ask questions about church? Like, why do we have to go to church? Don't lie to the priest, it's bad. Do you ever ask that question? You never ask questions about the church. Call the vocation director. We need them. <laughs> right? We need them. Sign them up. But yeah, we all kind of sometimes do it, you know? Sometimes I, you know, I have, I have three masses I come to sometimes on Sunday. And when people don't participate, I think, why did I bother getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to come to this? But I'm not doubting my faith. I'm doubting the human condition. So I want you today to listen to the scriptures and ask Thomas to help you overcome any doubts you may have so that you may go stronger in the knowledge and the love of the risen Lord. So receive the word of the Lord and proclaim it to our children as that same word will be proclaimed to us. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
But the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. So after the glorious Sunday of the resurrection and a week-long Gospels of appearances of the Lord, today the church presents us with Doubting Thomas and our annual reflection on doubts and faith. First of all, in this context, I am not considering faith as a compendium of dogmas, but faith as the belief in the very basis of our religion. And by this, I mean the core, the fundamentals. Belief in God's existence. Belief in the Holy Trinity. Belief in the divinity and humanity of Jesus our Christ. Belief in the spiritual and our sharing in the spiritual. Belief in the presence of God in word of scripture and in the sacraments, especially in the Holy Eucharist. Belief in our salvation by the Lord. Belief in the presence of the Spirit of the Father and the Son, as is in the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, all of us would be quick to affirm the mystery of faith, especially at Mass, when the priest chants, the mystery of faith, and everyone starts to sing. But do we understand what we're singing? But even if we do, that doesn't mean that we do not go through periods of doubt. It's quite normal for people to doubt. In fact, as I mentioned to the children, it's part of our human condition. It is normal for people to question themselves even. It's normal for people to question the depth of their faith or even if they have faith at all. I really do not believe that a person who doubts has lost faith. Rather, he or she is searching for faith. For example, how can there be a God who did not answer my prayer when I prayed that my 98-year-old grandma would not die? Well, by the fact that the person mentioned God in that says that there's some faith. And really, Grandma at 98, she was probably saying, please let me go. This has been enough. I want to see Jesus. Maybe we can understand this better if we consider two of the ways that doubt enters into our life. First of all, most of us entered 
into periods of doubt as we were growing up. Many times we are quite vocal about this. Our teenagers or preteens might question the religion teacher. How do I know that God exists? How do I know that all this Jesus stuff isn't just made up by a bunch of people that want money? Well, that can't be from the Catholic Church. We know that part. Those questions often asked with the lack of tact that only a young person can get away with are not as confrontational as they may seem to be. Consider the young person's perspective or consider your own perspective when you were young. You see, most of our intense lessons about our faith came to us when we were preparing for First Holy Communion. How old are we? Seven, eight years old. And then the next big shot comes at confirmation. When we're like 14, 15, 16 years old, when we already know everything there is to be known in the world. But we were looking for ideas that relate to our growing intellectual incapacity. In school, we graduated from arithmetic to algebra to calculus and on. But in our understanding of our faith, they tell us statistically that the average Catholic is at grade four, about eight years old in their faith. Think of it yourself. How many adults here, don't raise your hand. How many adults here have been to one adult formation class after you got married or had your babies where you were made to go to class? You know the answer better than I. But the vast majority of the time, teenagers who challenge the faith are not really questioning faith, but they're questioning a childish understanding of the faith. They want to go deeper. And somehow we fail in reminding people that we have deeper adult formation in our own church. You don't have to go to a Bible study at Champion Forest. We have Bible study classes here. But it's the neighbor that invites, the friend that invites. Why don't you invite? That is why experiences like youth ministry are so important to the faith life of our young people. They can now relate to the faith according to their level of maturity. Now there's another type of doubt that's far more difficult to deal with, and that's the doubt that enters our life when things go wrong. As I mentioned, why, God, did you take my 98-year-old grandma away from me? It is one thing to be a person of faith when all is wonderful in our lives. How are you doing today? Man, I'm blessed. It seems to be the new, I'm doing okay. I'm blessed. It's another thing to have faith when a loved one gets sick or dies or when we are afflicted with a serious illness or when our life plans are destroyed by the malicious actions of another, maybe even a former spouse. It was very easy for Thomas to believe in Jesus when he experienced his healing and when the words of the Lord burned within his own heart. It was difficult for Thomas to believe when his own world appeared to have fallen apart on Good Friday and thus Thomas doubted the resurrection because he could not get past the crucifixion. There was a moment in my life one time when it seemed like the whole world was going to go up in flames at any minute. And my spiritual director told me, pray before the crucified Lord. And I said, well, I'm already on the cross with him. I'm already suffering. He said, but when you embrace the crucified Lord, on the other side of that crucifix is the resurrected Lord. You can't embrace one without the other. 
Wow. Sometimes it's the same with all of us. We get so torn up by many crises in our lives that sometimes we can't get past those crises to experience the new life of Christ that's offered on Easter. How many people do you know that maybe have lost their jobs and the world seemed like it was falling apart and then they find a new job finally after a long search and it's like, man, this is the best thing God has ever done for me. But in the moment, in the moment, it hurts for being crucified. We can be so torn up by the physical events in our lives that we close the door to possibilities of the spiritual. That's what Thomas did. And that's what we tend to do. It's a normal human reaction to suffering. It really does mean, does not mean that we do not believe in God. But many people persecute themselves for having these thoughts and then wonder if God could ever forgive them for doubting. When you love someone, you are more concerned about their pain than you are about the way they express that pain. God loves us so much. He loves us so much to be concerned with anything other than our pain. At the same time, he tells us to give him our pain and to take a step out of physical suffering into the spiritual joy. That's what Easter is about. Easter is about the conquest of the physical by the spiritual. Easter is about life conquering death, love conquering hate, Jesus rising from the tomb, and our taking a step out of the physical and into the spiritual. Doubting is a part of the human condition. It will exist in our lives to some extent or another until we see our God face to face. At that time, the whole concept of doubt will be pointless. But until then, we recognize our humanity and we humbly ask our God to admit us as we are, human beings with human limitations into the divine. Faith is the one gift that God promises will be given to all who seek it. But even if we were to have the faith of a saint, we would still have doubts. When doubting Thomas made his act of faith, Jesus says, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen, but believe. He's talking about us. He's talking about each of us who cannot physically put our finger into the holes. He's talking about us who see the divine presence, not in the physical body of Jesus the man, but in his mystical body, the church. He is in our midst. We may have experienced the empty tomb. We have not seen, but we believe. Wow. That's why it's important what John says. All of this is written, written, down, written down, and even more that's not here, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith, you might have life in his name. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us set aside our doubts and true faith. And as St. Faustina prayed often, and we pray as well, Jesus, I trust in you even when we don't see the final results. Continuing to remember our baptism, once more we profess our faith using the baptismal creed, the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today, we call forward those among our community who by their words and actions will proclaim the gospel to the people of Guatemala. I now invite the sending out servants missionaries to please come forward. Missionaries come forward. Very good. St. Ignatius is very proud of our own parishioners who will be traveling to Guatemala April 13th through the 20th. And we invite everyone to offer prayerful support for them while they are away. But dear friends, as we take part in today's celebration, we are reliving a practice of the early church, the eager sending of its members to other peoples to assist them in their need and to share the faith. Sending you forth to serve our brothers and sisters in Guatemala will strengthen our bonds of communion with that community. And so now using your outside voice to answer, I ask you in the presence of God's faithful people, will you faithfully serve as witnesses to the divine love as you minister to those in need of your care? By your words and your lives, Will you proclaim the gospel that is proclaimed in this house of God? May God help you to be good stewards of what has been entrusted to you. And may you receive the grace you need for your servants. Let us now offer our prayers. For God, our merciful Father, anointed his own Son with the Holy Spirit to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to comfort the sorrowful. We pray together now for these servants being sent to Guatemala and for all who are in any need. For the church, that we may be bearers of God's mercy to all who need it most, especially those who find themselves doubting God's presence in their lives or in the world. Risen, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. For an end to armed conflict and to gun violence, so that all God's children may enjoy the peace that Jesus offers. Let us pray to the risen Lord. For these servants who will go forth to minister in your name, that they may bear true witness to the gospel of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, as we support them in prayer, that we may emulate the early Christian community as described in today's first reading, sharing what we have so that no person goes needy. Let us pray to the risen Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. For all newly initiated Christians, that their faith may be strengthened in community. Prayer. <coughs> For all
all who serve our communities as first responders to tragedies and disasters, for our military sons and daughters, and for their families and loved ones. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For John Carroll, Jerry Lebo, Wayne Bernson, the brother of David Bernson, and all our beloved dead. May they experience the fulfillment of God's promise of a new and eternal life in heaven. Risen Lord, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Connie, there are other missionaries that will be joining you, right, from other parts of the country. How many others will, three or four more from up north, the northeast corridor and, and other parts. So as we pray God's blessing upon you, we remember them as well, that through this blessing, they too may be inspired to know that God is with them. Let us pray. We bless you, O God, and we praise your name. In your merciful providence, you have sent your Son into the world to free us from bondage by sin of sin by his own blood and to enrich us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Before he returned, triumphant over death, to you, Father, he sent his apostles the bearers of his love and power to proclaim the gospel of life to all peoples and in the waters of baptism to cleanse those who believe. Look kindly now upon these your servants and give them your blessing as we send them forth as messengers of salvation and peace in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord who lives forever and ever. Amen. Father of all holiness, you willed the cross of your Son to be the source of all blessings, the fount of all grace. Bless these crosses and those who will wear them. Grant that those who preach the crucified Christ to others may themselves strive to be transformed into his image through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive this sign of Christ's love and of the mission to which the church has chosen you. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Thank you for accepting the mission of the Lord. As the altar is being prepared, please join in singing, I Has Not Seen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who have brought to a new birth that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. So holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Italo, the assisting bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all, the all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night of your glorious resurrection said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the firstborn from the dead. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Those bringing Holy Communion to the sick and homebound, please come forward. Receive the body of Christ. We have sent missionaries forth this day to Guatemala, and we send you forth now to those among us who are not able to join us here because of their illness and their sickness. Bear the word of God. Bear the sacrament of eternal life and feed them with both. Go in peace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. This coming Saturday, April 13th, we have our second Saturday Holy Hour and Rosary for Life in our Reservation Chapel beginning at 12.30. Please see the bulletin for more information. Our Sending Out Servants Vision Missionary Team invites you to pray for them, covering them in prayer while they are in Guatemala from April 13th to the 20th. Please stop at the table in the North X for more information and to sign up to spend an hour with the risen Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, praying for their safety and success of their mission. Please do take home a copy of the bulletin for information about all the events on our campus. And if you missed the collection baskets when they were passed, please use the acrylic boxes in the North X for your regular weekly donation. If you are bringing or have not yet brought your El Flaco Little Church almsgiving for Lent, we're collecting those now. Please bring them in. You can drive back today if you forgot them, drop them off at the office anytime this week. But uh, we are collecting our Lenten almsgiving and uh, presenting it to the people in El Flaco in just two weeks. Finally, well, not finally, we got one more thing. Let me do this and then we'll do that. This is the fourth ring of our circus today. You know, most circus have three rings. This is our fourth one. So pay attention to this one. We invite the Elsom family to come forward now. They have made a promise to pray for vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and the permanent diaconate. And so we're going to equip them with our traveling chalice so that they remember the ministry of the church in the sacrifice of the Lord. And we're going to give them a book of prayers and activities so that the whole family can be involved in this. So let's pray for them now. Loving God, we ask you to give your blessings upon Thomas, Cindy, Emma, Katie, and Joanna as they receive this chalice, the symbol of ministry in the church. We thank them for the pledge of prayers, for vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and the permanent diaconate. May their dedication inspire many to follow in the footsteps of Christ, and may the Lord bless them abundantly. In his name, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Isn't it your brother being ordained a priest June 1st? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Give God the glory. His brother, Luis, was always here in this church praying and coming to daily mass. So don't think that your prayers don't go unanswered. They truly do. 
We have two more seminarians in formation at the seminary. Marlon Borea will be in pastoral year next year. He'll be stationed at St. Martha's Church. And then we have Mitchell Schumann. Mitchell is in Rome studying. He may be a bishop someday. That's where they send the guys to become bishops, to Rome. So Mitchell is there studying. It is in, I think, second or third year. So keep the prayers going. Keep them going. And now, finally, are you ready for this one? <clears throat> While we've been in here praying and singing and offering our lives to the Lord, I saw the Easter bunny go by. I saw these ears through the cars over there. So at 1030 in nine minutes, we're going to turn the children loose. For the Easter bunny sent me a message during communion that he was ready for you. So you think it's all holy up here. Sometimes the Easter bunny sends messages. So follow the signs. There are a thousand signs on our property today indicating what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go. All I know is the ears popped by and the signs are out and the rest is up to you, okay? And we thank our mom's group for organizing that with Easter Bunny, getting him a week late. And last but not least, our retreatants. Raise your hand if you've been on retreat all weekend. Yes, they've been on retreat all weekend reflecting on the divine mercy of God. May that grace that you acquired be infiltrated into the life of the church. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen today.